Good morning. The way Muncie recycles is changing. Learn how you can prepare for the change. It may be cold outside, but that means it's prime soup season. All about a local business focused on soup. Spring break is on the way. How you can save on travel costs. Get the coffee ready and open up those eyes. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. From Ball State Unified Media, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather, live from the Ball State Weather Center. Good Friday morning to you. You're waking up with Cardinal Weather. I'm Olivia Sonica. And I'm Emma Matlock. Starting this spring, the Muncie Sanitary District will get rid of its blue bags and replace them with a new recycling program. Newslink Indiana's Anna Chalker explains how this may affect your trash day. As the trash truck makes its rounds, people rush to put their bins at the curb. And to stop the mixture of trash and recycling, the Muncie Sanitary District is changing a program that has been in place for more than 20 years. So we're moving from transitioning from blue bag recycling, single stream recycling, to a blue toter, a 96 gallon blue toter that's bagless. These toters will hold more than the recycled items. Um, but there's going to be a lot more focus, education and outreach associated with the new program. The schedule for trash pickup will not change and people will be able to place the toter next to their green one. It's just two different trucks will pick it up. Your trash toter will get picked up by a trash truck. Your recycling will get picked up by a recycling truck. And some residents in Muncie are ready to get the ball rolling on the program. I think it will be easier in the long run rather than trying to you know, compact everything in the blue bags and then put it in the toter where you can just put it in the toter. Before the toters hit people's driveways, Donetti is looking ahead for how this program will keep the city green. So we think this program will be much more efficient. It will help increase our recycling participation rate and it will help increase our recycling uh, as far as how much we're diverting from the landfill. Your sanitation bill will not increase because of the change of programs and the sanitary district hopes recycling will increase in the city. In Muncie, Anna Chalker, Newslink, Indiana. Now you still have a couple months left with the blue bags, but once the toters hit the driveways, the bags will go away. If you want to sign up for a blue tote, go to the Muncie Sanitary District website and take the recycling pledge. Nearly $1 million in community grants was awarded to the Community Foundation of Muncie and Delaware County this week. The Boys and Girls Club of Muncie received $65,000. City of Muncie was awarded a little over $27,000 to support the Riverview Park project. Delaware County Emergency Com Communication Center got $25,000 toward radio equipment for dispatch vehicles. The Greater Muncie Area, the Greater Muncie Indiana Habitat for Humanity received the largest sum, $75,000 to help the 2023 housing program. Even though we've had a little bit of warmer wa weather lately, winter usually means soup season. One downtown Muncie business owner is bringing soup to the masses. Newslink Indiana's Adele Reap reports. In this small kitchen, Kate Crow is making a giant batch of loaded baked potato soup. Crow is the owner of Runaround Soup, located in the commercial kitchen on Walnut Street. The online business has been running for over a year and a half and started when Crow noticed something was missing in the community. Students or kids who are very busy, they often got snacks or fast food for dinner and I thought there might be a better option. The solution? Soup. All contained in a container, one container, that soup holds your, your protein and your veg and sometimes your carbs and then a bread comes with it. This gives you 10-15 minutes to sit down to dinner because you didn't have to cook it and clean up the dishes. Crow's recipes include corned beef and cabbage and fish chowder, but the variety of rolls on the side. There's also an alternative option, such as vegetarian or dairy-free. Don't be afraid of it, it's delicious. But here's where the veggies are. The response has been overwhelming. Each week, Crow can have 25 to 45 orders to fulfill. It feels like you're a part of a community here too. Runaround Soup only operates half of the week, with Mondays for cooking and Tuesdays for pickup. Crow wanted to have a business and spend more time with her family, and she wants her customers to do so too. Think about your neighbors who maybe just had a baby or are recovering from an illness. It's really a beautiful gift to give to your neighbor or friend, a meal that you don't have to cook. Crow hopes to continue to keep her customers happy and well fed. Have a good evening. Right. In Muncie, Adele Reich, Newslink, Indiana. 
Thank you, Adele. Now, soup sounds amazing, especially in this weather. What's your favorite kind of soup? Uh, chicken noodle soup. What about you? Oh, I love a good bowl of chili. Now, speaking of chili, I heard that it's going to be pretty cold this weekend. And now to the weather. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Today it's going to be pretty cold, but I tell you what, some chicken noodle soup might hit the spot right now. Taking a look at our current temperatures on the map here, we're going to be 24 degrees in Muncie, same as in Indianapolis as well. Very, very cold temperatures from what we saw yesterday. It's hard to believe that yesterday we were in the mid 60s as a high, and now we're somewhat back to normal now in the 20s. Very, very cold whiplash here. However, if we look throughout the day, the next 12 hours here, we see we're going to warm up just slightly into the high 30s. So still going to be rather cold throughout the day. So if you are headed out, make sure you do bundle up, grab that hat, scarf, coat, everything you need there, and that cup of coffee warm, warms everything up there. So what we're tracking in our show to head this cold Friday that we're dealing with right now. However, for the weekend, we will see the return of the sun. And for your start of the week, we are looking at some rain chances. If you have looked at flights lately ahead of spring break and summer travel, you may have been shocked. With travel demand sky high, prices are too. In this Consumer Watch, Cole Higgins has a look at how to save on airfare. If you're trying to plan your next getaway and are looking for flights, heads up. Travelers are going to experience true sticker shock if they're booking travel this spring or summer. Haley Berg, the lead economist at mobile travel app Hopper, says U.S. domestic fares are about 20% higher than they were this time last year. That said, airfare is only about 5% more expensive than what you would have paid pre-pandemic. And that's the good news. International travel right now is more expensive than it has been in years. Demand is soaring for travel to the Asia Pacific region, the last to open to international visitors. Asia airfares are about 50% higher compared to 2019, and prices are up in other regions too. Airfare to Europe up 15%, airfare to Mexico and Central America up 30%. So how can you possibly save money on flights? One, Burke says be flexible on when and where you fly. If you're headed to an international destination, flying on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday can save you about $150 per ticket off of weekend prices. Same goes with the destination you're flying to. Oftentimes, we see airfare under four or $500 to Portugal. It's a great gateway country that gives you access to more regional and cheaper flights throughout Europe. Two, monitor the price of a trip through an app and you'll be notified when it's the right time to book. Lastly, consider delaying vacations until the shoulder season. September and October, you can save as much as 30% off some of those peak summer prices. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Just ahead, how one family is dealing with a national medication shortage. That's after your weather now. Welcome back. The current time is 8.09 and you're taking a live look outside the Foundational Science Building. Months since the U.S. Food and Drug Administration first announced a national Adderall shortage and now many patients are dealing with the consequences. The medication is used to help with symptoms of ADHD. Chris Wynn shares how one family is coping. Clara Pitt says Adderall changed her life for the better. It was just like as if if anyone's worn glasses, 
when you go around with dirty glasses, you get used to it and you don't realize that they're dirty. But when you clean them off, having that extra bit of clarity makes a world of difference. Now she's one of many Americans dealing with the shortage. The FDA says one reason is that demand for Adderall has gone up from 35.5 million prescriptions in 2019 to 45 million last year. But some manufacturers have yet to clarify what issues they're having, and experts say that's part of the problem. It's really difficult to be able to anticipate and let alone come up with meaningful solutions if you don't know what the problem is. The FDA says it's helping however it can to increase supply, but pediatric psychologist Benjamin Fields says anyone looking for the drug should talk to their doctors. There's other stimulant medications too, and they could they could talk about whether there's options that their medical provider thinks would be appropriate. Clara did just that, but says it wasn't an easy decision, and for her, it's not the same. We didn't want to try a new medication in the middle of my stressful senior year because it's a medication that affects your mind. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn. The COVID-19 pandemic brought setbacks in many areas of life, including our health. Millions of Americans missed routine cancer screenings during the second year of the pandemic. With the level of screening for breast, cervical, and prostate cancers in the previous year falling anywhere from 6 to 15 percent between 2019 and 2021. That's according to a study from the American Cancer Society. But a separate research study suggests people are starting to return to screenings rates seen before the pandemic. Data published last week in the journal Epic Research found rates of screening for breast, cervical, and colon cancers may have returned to normal. Doctors say anyone who missed a routine cancer screening during the pandemic should catch up now. Some parts of the country are in the midst of a massive winter storm, while other areas are experiencing a summer-like heat wave. More than 130 U.S. cities could set new records for daily and monthly high temperatures this week. Experts warn that it's not a good thing, though. According to the National Oceanic a Atmospheric Administration, about 35 to 40 percent of the Great Lakes should be covered in ice right now. Without ice to act as a buffer for large wind-driven waves, coastlines are more susceptible to erosion and flooding. As for crops, plants are blooming earlier because of the warmer weather, leaving them vulnerable to spring freezes. Now, I am sad to hear about the cold weather sort of not doing anything for our plants, but I am kind of happy for the warmer weather we've experienced these past couple of days. I agree, it's definitely very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and send it to Eric with weather. Well, yeah, it's pretty crazy outside. Pretty much the nation right now, looking towards the west, you notice this big system out that's bringing in some rain and snow to portions of California right now, and that's in association with this uh, matrix that's moving into that area. And that's also bringing drought relief to their area as well as they've been dealing with drought for quite quite a bit of time, and this is helping to alleviate that drought. But also the system is also bringing, if it brings snow to San Francisco, this is the first time in 47 years that this has been the case, because the last time we've seen snow is actually in 1976. And with this happening over here in California, this is quite unique for them. And out your ears, we're just seeing some strange showers from portions of Tennessee right now. But looking towards our watches and warnings right now, looking at this fog batteries for portions of Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, and looking out to our west, looking at a lot going on right now. We have high wind warnings down to our south, wind storm warnings to our southwest in association with that big snow, snow, snowstorm, and then out to our north, seeing some wind chill warnings. And as you will see later in our graphic with how cold it is right now, especially in this portions of the nation. And looking at, at the temperatures, you notice temperatures as much as 15 degrees below in Billings, seven degrees below in Minneapolis, and two below down near Denver. You can tell that's quite cold in that, in those, in those, in that part of the country right now. And you can see that's where old winter is sticking its finger into the nation right now. And looking towards the east, looking at a little milder temperature on 68 degrees in Atlanta, you notice also the stark contrast in temperatures. And this is where the cold front is right now. As you can see, it's pushing through portions of Tennessee and getting ready to move into Georgia. And that's expected to bring them to colder temperatures as they head further down the road. And as you get through day today, looking at temperatures looking Quite cold for much of the nation's midsection once again. Not moving much for you in Billings and Minneapolis and down to our southeast. Temperatures around 74 degrees down here in Atlanta. And then looking further down the road as you head into the first few days of March, looking at cold temperatures raining out here to our west, especially for California and then out to our east, as has been the pattern for February. Temperatures will continue to rain mild into the first few days of March. You notice the oranges and pinks, noticing above average temperatures continuing for that time frame as well. Thank you, Eric. NASA has sent new technology into space to study dust storms here on Earth. 
The high-tech device is called EMIT, and it is currently attached to the International Space Station. NASA says the device orbits Earth 16 times a day, mapping out common key minerals in dust-producing deserts. Scientists plan to use the information gathered to learn more about dust storms so the world can plan better for the future. Researchers, say, researchers also say the data will help them understand how airborne dust affects our climate. EMIT can detect the presence of methane in the air, a potent greenhouse gas. They believe if they can better pinpoint where methane leaks are coming from, they could possibly gain control of methane emissions and limit global warming. In just a moment, we'll take a look at the Muncie sectional bracket. And that's after your weather right now. Welcome back to Cardinal Weather. I'm Jace Miller. And I'm Brandon Beeman. In this upcoming Wednesday night, sectional basketball is here in Muncie. 4A sectional number nine. Let's start by taking a look at the bracket. First up, we have the Richmond Devils at 15 and six, taking on the Pendleton Heights Arabians. And then in that game, we have, you know, they didn't play each other in the regular season, but they come in at 59 points per game for Richmond and a 51.9 points per game for Pendleton Heights. In game two, we have the Muncie Central Bearcats against the Mount Vernon Marauders. This will be a little tighter of a matchup as Muncie Central is on a two-game win streak right now, and they're 14-7 and seven overall. Uh, Mount Vernon's 13-8 and eight right now, but on a one-game uh, losing streak. Mount Vernon averages 10 points per game more than uh, Muncie Central, so this will be a tight one. On to game number three, and I think this will be the best game we have in the first round. Anderson Indians taking on the Greenfield Central Cougars. Anderson comes in at 18-4 on the year, but Greenfield Central with a more impressive 20-1 on the year. Now, Greenfield Central, 17-game win streak, so they are red, red hot coming into this one. And they have 61 points per game on average, as Anderson averages 66.2 points per game to counteract that 61. Let's take a look at some uh, Muncie Central season stats. They're averaging almost 50 points per game, uh, almost 20 rebounds per game, and just over 11 uh, turnovers per game. Player stats for Muncie. Daniel Harris leads the team at 15.6 points per game coming in. Antonio Gore leads the team at 5.4 rebounds per game. And Josh Ulam at 3.4 assists per game and 2.2 steals per game. Muncie Central record against sectional opponents in their sectional this year, not too hot. The only team they've beaten this year in their sectional is Pendleton Heights in a close one, winning 43-41 to back in early February. I think the biggest threat to Muncie Central in this bracket could be that second round matchup against Greenfield Central. They're 20-1 on the season. They're the eighth best team in the state, led by Dylan Moles. Um, they've played in this gym before. They won the Muncie City of Champions tournament earlier in the season, and Dylan Moles was the tournament MVP. He had 20 points per game right now, 57% from the field, 45% from three. Um, so I think that's their biggest matchup coming up. And like you said, Dylan Moles, they've won here in Muncie Central before, and I believe they can come into this building again and do it one more time. Uh, let's go back. Let's make our picks, Brandon. Let's All go right. and look into the bracket. Um, I have in the first round, I have Richmond beating Pendleton Heights, and I have Muncie Central. I think it'll be a close one. I have them beating the Mount Vernon. Marauders, and game three, I have Greenfield Central, the Cougars coming out on top. I would agree with you on some point, but I think Mount Vernon's going to take the win out of this close matchup. 
right on. Uh, as we failed to mention, but New Pal Dragons, they have the buy here, so they go immediately into round number two. I have New Pal going up against Richmond, and I have New Pal taking that win there. And then between the Bearcats and the Cougars, I have the Greenfield Central Cougars taking on Muncie Central and winning that one. As the two best teams in the bracket, I agree with you. This championship round is going to be New Pal against Greenfield Central. This is going to be a really tight matchup. New Pal has two scorers over 15 points per game. Their whole team is shooting 50% from the field and 40% from three. And as I mentioned earlier, Greenfield Central coming in at a 17-game win streak, 20-1 and on the year. But that one loss is the New Pal Dragons, so I'm going to have to go with New Pal on this one. All right, all right. I'm thinking Greenfield Central's taking this one. They're on that 17-game win streak. They're coming back. They want to win against this new pal team. Um, that's our picks. Now we're going to send it over to Jack with local weather. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Taking a look at our big story here around the area are these cold, cold temperatures that we are experiencing. We're experiencing this type of whiplash because yesterday we were quite warmer than we are right now. So looking at, just looking at our 24-hour temperature change, Muncie is 28 degrees colder than we were just 24 hours ago. Look at Bloomington, 30 degrees colder. It's a massive, massive change. We saw that big warm front come through early on Thursday and then we followed that up with a steep cold front as well that brought us kind of back to our usual seasonal temperatures as so. So taking a step outside right now, we're going to be in the mid-20s around the area. 24 here in Muncie, same in Indianapolis. Shelbyville will be at a nice low, 25 degrees. So if you are headed out, be sure to bring that coat with you because you're going to need it there. But good news is current radar is looking relatively clear. We do have a couple of lingering clouds in the area that will start to dissipate as the day goes on because we will be seeing that those peaks of sunshine as you're headed out now and throughout the day. So that is something to look forward to so you don't have to worry about those colder, colder temperatures. Kind of timing this out for you. Nine o'clock here, we're going to warm up a little bit there to 27 and we'll kind of uh, bow out around the high 30s, 37 at five o'clock. Our high is going to come around four o'clock at 39 degrees there. So looking at our forecast for tonight, so we do have a forecasted low of 29 degrees, partly cloudy. However, those winds will be dying down a little bit, only five to 10 miles an hour. So not too much that we had to worry about. I know last week we saw a lot of those high winds, so it's kind of nice to get a break from that. Good news though, we will be warming up for the weekend. Tom or, yeah, tomorrow's high on Saturday will be 48 degrees. Great, even better news, Sunday's high, going to be 56 as well. Lots of sunshine as well. The only issue we have is on Sunday, late into the night, probably early, early Monday morning, we will be seeing those clouds start to build up because we do have a next chance of rain late Sunday, early Monday morning. So we do have to keep an eye on that. I do want to talk about these high temperatures though. Yesterday's high, 67 degrees. Today's high, 39 degrees. 39 degrees. You know what the best part about this is? The past three weeks it's done this. Thursday, we've seen very, very warm temperatures, 50s, 60s. The next day, cold front comes through, knocks us back. It's just the atmosphere trying to balance itself out there with those very unseasonable-like temperatures there. Now onto our mid seven day forecast. We can see our high today of 39 degrees, dropping down to 29 degrees, warming up a little bit uh, for the weekend, but Monday is going to be our main chance uh, of rain that we'll see next. And it looks like Wednesday and Thursday could be a little wet too. However, we're going to be dealing with these warmer temperatures, which is kind of nice. I know that we shouldn't be seeing them now, but I'm not going to lie. I feel like we're kind of getting, getting spoiled by these temperatures now. Absolutely, but I, I am just so ready for the warmer temperatures. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The fact that I had to wear a sweatshirt walking in this morning was just awful. I was Devastating. not excited about it. Devastating, absolutely. Honestly, I just, I'm not surprised that we've been duped by the Indiana weather again. Every year. Every year. It, it's great. We get our hopes up and then just drops off. Looks like it could be a cold later spring. Not sure yet, but that's how it's kind of looking. Not looking forward to that. I'll tell you that. Yeah, thank you, Jack. In just a moment, we'll see what's new in Hollywood. That's after your weather now.
From the heart of Fall State to the heart of your community, NewsLink Indiana brings you local and state news, news you care about. We pride ourselves with giving you the most reliable news coverage, stories that affect you, linking you to the community each night on air and online. NewsLink Indiana, bringing news to the heart of your community. Welcome back. If you're on a low carb diet, go ahead and give yourself a cheat day because it's National Tortilla Chip Day observed every year on February 24th. There are plenty of ways to celebrate because there are as many ways to eat tortilla chips as there are fans of the tr crunchy triangular treat. Dip them in some cheese, top them with some chili, add them to some soup or a casserole. The list is endless. Some credit Rebecca Webb Carranza, Carranza as the inventor of the tortilla chip, creating the snack from rejected tortillas at her workplace in Los Angeles in the 1940s. However, the Tomalina Compa Milling Company claims its family tortilla company made the famous chips long before that. Starbucks is adding an unexpected ingredient to its newest cup of joe, olive oil. The coffee chain is introducing a new line of drinks made with a spoonful of extra virgin olive oil. The new line introduces the Alito Latte, the Alito Ice Shaken Espresso, and the Alito Golden Foam Cold Brew. The latte has in it oat milk and olive oil, while the espresso has, takes those two ingredients and adds a hazelnut flavor. Finally, the cold brew features a sweet milk foam infused with two olive oil servings. Starbucks will make the new beverages available at its cafes in, it in Italy this week. Versions will then hit Southern California this spring. Starbucks says the drinks will go global sometime this year. A new themed land at Universal Studios Hollywood not only lets you visit the world of Super Mario, but play along as well. Richard Dominglia reports Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood is open right now. Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood is taking the concept of theme park lands to the next level. Hey, how you doing? Hey, hello. Hi. Anone. <laughs> There was a worry initially as how is it going to turn out? How is it going to actually translate into the real world? But with the help of the creative folks at Universal, we worked closely to make sure that starting from one block at a time, and as I see it coming together and all the blocks uh, piling up, it really surprised even myself how, how much of a, a reality that this has become and how amazing it is. It was something that we had wanted to do as well, and seeing uh, a lot of the work that Universal has done and the way they do uh, a lot of their creative work has really, uh, we really felt like it was a fit for us, and just seeing it come to realization and seeing it in reality has really uh, kind of proven itself there. We put a lot of effort into details both from large attractions like the Mario Kart attraction all the way down to the single blocks that you can interact with. All of them are opportunities for everyone to participate. That participation comes in a wearable power-up band that tracks your score. And you're in a game. You can get points. You can go meet the great, the characters and get t uh, stamps uh, on, on your uh, app. On your app, and you can track your progress. And over there on the leaderboard, you can see how you're doing against the best of the day. Wow, you collected so many coins. Leveling up in Hollywood. It's a me, Rick Damagella. Speaking of Hollywood. Brianna is set to perform Lift Me Up at the Oscars, according to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. The ballad from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is up for Best Original Song, marking Rihanna's first ever Oscar nomination. The superstar artist is already having quite a year. She's fresh off a record-breaking Super Bowl halftime show, and she's expecting her second child with rapper ASAP Rocky. The Oscars will be broadcast live on ABC from Los Angeles on March 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now that is so exciting to hear. I do love a good Rihanna song. I think it's going to be great. Jack, you want to give us one last look at weather? Absolutely. So looking at our seven-day forecast, we can see that today is going to be quite cold. However, this looks like the last cold day on the seven-day. We're going to be warming up uh, for the weekend. Looks like we're going to have some chances of rain on Monday, a little bit of wind on Tuesday to look out for. Wednesday and Thursday, cloudy. We do have some chances of rain, but with that, warmer temperatures. So all in all, I don't think too bad. Thank you, Jack. Now that's all for Cardinal Weather this Friday morning. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend.